It is Friday, February 20th. Let's talk PlayStation. Welcome back, everyone. It's been yet another uh, relatively somewhat slow news week, uh, but we do still have some rumors and things like that. It's just that uh, next week we've got Gamescom and then September and October. That's when a lot of publishers will probably get a lot more active about, you know, what their Q1 and Q2 lineups look like. So until then, we've got this. And uh, well, today, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut launches. So if you're playing on PS4 or 5 today, I hope you enjoy it. I will uh, probably be playing that all day. Uh, last week I picked up Hades and I wanted to start it, but usually I like doing one game at a time and Hades would have took too long if I went for Platinum. So I will probably be starting um, the Director's Cut today, which I can just import my uh, save file. Which, uh, well first, let's as always go over our PS Plus reminder, the August games are available right now. Grab them, download them, get them out of the way. Uh, our first story is the import save feature for Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. So I'll be doing this. And it's um, something where we can just quickly, well, briefly mention that we have our confirmation here that this is a relatively new part of the PS5 SDK. So we had initially seen this for the PS5 version of Jedi The Fallen Order, where that game was reading PS4 save files no problem. And that was great because before that, it was much more convoluted. You had to, uh, you know, start the PS4 version of the game, upload your save via cloud, then download it on the PS5 version. This was also a feature that developers had to support, and, you know, not every developer was doing that. So it was a, a convoluted, not very graceful uh, process. And we now have confirmation that, uh, well, via Richard Ledbetter of Digital Foundry that they initially saw the PS5 SDK roadmap. So this was something that was going to come eventually. And so now we see for sure that it is here with Star Wars and now also Ghost of Tsushima. And this goes alongside what we also saw with what I presume is an SDK update for PS4, just for how PS4 games function and how PS5 reads them. But we now know that PS4 games through backwards compatibility, some of those titles, if they're supported, they can go past uh, 60 FPS. So they don't, they no longer have to be native PlayStation 5 games to go above 60 FPS. That's the issue there. And we're already seeing some games uh, enable that, like recently Rocket League and also uh, Call of Duty Warzone. That was uh, I think a few weeks ago or a month ago now at this point but uh, we're finally seeing a lot of these smaller issues finally get ironed out and it's still not perfect of course but it's just nice to see that there are solutions to what were some uh, very annoying problems next up let's go over what we have so far for the blue box game studios situation and we have more to say, but at the same time, we don't because we don't know anything still. But we do have a few things here, and I'm sure a lot of you probably saw at this point. Uh, last week after I uploaded LTPS, a few hours later into the day, we finally had that first patch for the real-time experience application. And that first tease was the same four-second clip that we got on Twitter, which in itself, of course, is kind of baffling and hilarious. But at least to their credit, the real-time app does exactly what it's supposed to. It's running in real time in front of you, so it looks very nice. Uh, basically, it looks better than if it were a 4K video being streamed, um, so that's good. It sounds actually quite nice as well if you have headphones on. It sounds eerie and a little bit creepy, uh, but of course, that's still, you know, it's the same four-second clip. So this past week, we have a few things here. First off, all the tweets were deleted, talking about the patch being delayed and things like that, and then the studio had Hassan Karman, was doing an interview with NME where he says, and I quote, basically we had to cut some footage from the opening teaser and I knew that it wasn't a good idea to use the same footage that we had on Twitter and put it in there because it's literally just four seconds of footage and it doesn't give much, but we needed to do this because people wanted to have a patch, right? That was our first priority. Just get the patch out there because we'll be adding more content later. Now, Hassan also says the cinematic trailer is coming like really soon apparently. Uh, there's no promises on a Gamescom appearance though, so even though that could be next week, um, there's no promises. The teaser image with the eye patch man blurred in the background, apparently that's the game's antagonist. Uh, NME has also heard a plot breakdown and they say it's not Silent Hill, Metal Gear, or Kojima if you're still, you know, believing that. It's also apparently not a horror game, as Hassan puts it, it's more of a linear story with survival elements. Hassan also says, and I quote, I'm really depressed right now. I can't sleep. I can't eat. The biggest thing that's bugging me is just that people are labeling us as scammers. That is the big thing that really, really hurts me because that is not my intention at all, you know? 
Now we have some IGN coverage that was later in the week and this uh, we learned more stuff here. So their previous game in early access, which was at one point handed to Creative Q or Create Q Entertainment, the haunting blood water curse. This will be completed and given away for free before Abandon is released. And basically, Blood Water Curse is like a, a Fatal Frame ins inspired type game. It was an early access, then they, they stopped taking in uh, orders or you, you couldn't buy the game anymore. Uh, they say that's still going to be finished by uh, former Blue Box staff. It's like four people that are working on this, allegedly. And uh, Hassan also says that he regrets how this whole thing played out, understandably. Uh, Blue Box itself has 10 full-time staff, up to 50, including freelance and outsourcing. Uh, Hassan also says uh, for their past works, kind of explaining why they've got a weird history. Uh, basically, he just says they're smaller, the games didn't run well, or they weren't totally complete, and they were just pulled from their respective storefronts to, you know, obviously do it right, which is what they're trying to do with Abandoned. But the problem here that he admits is that everything about Abandoned so far was just a case of announcing everything too early. And, you know, there's just, uh, the whole thing is just kind of crazy. But when it's put in that context and assuming everything is in the, assuming everything is on the up and up, then that's kind of what's happening here. I think you've got a, a small group of staff that have never really done this before. Uh, they had all these past projects that were kind of, you know, not really great by any stretch, but um, they were projects where they just kind of um, jumped the gun a little bit too fast, releasing them, doing early access, pulling them, and now they want to do it right. And they had, you know, investment, private investment, which they then said, they say they've paid back. Um, so we, again, we don't have much to go on still. Um, it seems like anybody that ends up talking to Hassan, you know, we, we, don't, we still don't really learn a whole lot. So hopefully this cinematic trailer will, will paint a better picture of what's going on in the game. And um, at least from this point forward, we do have a, a decent idea of what, what the game actually is, right? Survival elements, not quite horror. It was supposed to be open world at one point. Now it's more linear, which is probably what they're capable of pulling off if they are in fact a fairly small studio that has to do a lot of outsourcing work which is not you know not impossible right many developers do this in fact it's extremely commonplace to outsource a lot of your a lot of your work so for now at least that's all we have on the blue box game studios fiasco moving on to our next news story as part of a recent data mine of the last of us part two uh, the YouTube channel Speclizer noticed some multiplayer assets inside the game, which may or may not tell us what we can expect for Factions 2 or whatever Naughty Dog decides to call it, but they discovered a map which at a glance doesn't look that large, but I mean really you can see all the, the various points of interest like the gas station, motel, estate, the port. Um, so putting those things into context, which uh, Speclizer does a good job of doing that with the, the free roam camera, you can see how these environments are a lot larger than they, you know, than you would think, right? In fact, each point of interest in a more traditional multiplayer sense would, you know, accommodate for a 5v5, 6 versus 6, you know, standard you know, match that would play out for 10 minutes or something. But when you've got all these places, it seems more like it might be for like a 50, 60 player, maybe 100 player battle royale style mode. They also mentioned in the comments that uh, they discovered a compass and a player count. I'm guessing UI element, which that would be for a, a battle royale type mode. They also discovered an emote wheel script and then um, armor, helmets, backpack models that they weren't able to restore just yet. Or I think they did, I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, uh, this isn't a guarantee that we'll see these things. It just means that they were worked on at some point. They're still in the, the code for the base game of The Last of Us Part Two. And all we know right now, of course, is that Naughty Dog is still hiring for this project and it succumbed to, uh, to scope creep, I guess we'd call it right, where it got larger and larger. And now it's like, let's break it off and either sell it or do free to play or we just don't know, but um, this would give us a good idea of like, okay, this is why it's taking as long as it had, right? Or as long as it is, because uh, assuming we have traditional 5v5, 6v6, you know, multiplayer modes and things like that, we could also have the Battle Royale style um, mode as well, which could actually work quite well for The Last of Us. Um, I haven't played many Battle Royale games nowadays, but I would guess that the only thing they really have to do to make that work is... Um, 
possibly be a, a little bit aggressive with centering players in just because sometimes matches for The Last of Us are really slow because, you know, it's, it is a very, you know, you're, you're creeping around, you're making noises. Some people are sometimes aggressive with it. Some people will hang back for a bit and snipe, but this is not like a run and gun style game. Now, there might be certain firefights that play out. Um, depending on again like the game mode that you're involved in but I think this could actually work well if um, if done correctly and so it would be interesting to see if this actually is a part of the uh, the full project whenever we get a proper formal formal reveal of what Naughty Dog's been up to this entire time. Next up in keeping with the rumors that we talked about last week on LTPS which back then we had uh, two of them regarding classic PlayStation IP possibly making a return, one of them being a Wipeout VR game, another one being a Sly Cooper game. We've got another one this week, which is for possibly Twisted Metal coming in 2023. This is coming from Tom Henderson over on Twitter. Now, Tom Henderson is somebody that we don't really ever talk about because they are mostly known for uh, leaking Call of Duty and Battlefield stuff, and I think other third-party things as well. Um, but you know, they've got a history there that's, uh, that goes back a few years and you can see that some things are accurate, some things aren't, but because they have somewhat of a track record that has been fairly reliable, that's why, you know, there's some eyes on this and people are, you know, thinking that maybe this is something that's going to happen, especially because, well, we know confirmed there is a Twisted Metal TV series, which I think a lot of people may have forgotten at this point, but it's part of the one of, you know, 10 projects that PlayStation Productions is evaluating and working on actively, so... Twisted Metal as a TV show is coming, and well, that's another thing that we can talk about here because David Jaffe, one of the creators of Twisted Metal, uh, nowadays he's on Twitter and he's very vocal on his YouTube channel, so he covers a lot of topics, so of course he was going to talk about this almost immediately, and he says he did not hear anything about it, uh, which for the Twisted Metal TV show he did. He was informed, and I believe he's doing some consulting work or something, uh, a little bit of back and forth. He's not like involved creatively to the full extent of that, that project, right, but he was told about it essentially, and in fairness, he also points out that he was not told about the 2018 God of War, which, you know, he was also largely a part of uh, in the early days. So um, that's not like a dead giveaway, and if anything, he can't really say much of anything if he was involved because he'd have to sign NDAs or, you know, respect the project's secrecy, and so what does he do if he's, if he's quite active on social media and YouTube, right? Does he just not acknowledge it? Does he say, you know, I'm under NDA, which that tells you that it's a real thing, or does he lie about it so that way it's the most believable scenario? But I digress. The point is, uh, David Jaffe said that, and on a personal note, so maybe it's true, but he's saying that he would be quite hurt if he wasn't told about this project. Um, but there's that. And then Andy Robinson of Video Games Chronicle says, uh, well, he was retweeting his article where he says, awkwardly, it's since been suggested to me that this is real. So uh, I think on its own, this would have been a little bit iffy, uh, even accounting for the TV show, which I think that alone, like when we heard about the TV show, I was like, Twisted Metal, really? Oh, I, all right, I guess so. Um, so that was a little bit strange. And then if we have this rumor, it's like, all right, still a little bit iffy to see Twisted Metal maybe make a comeback. But when we combine this with last week about, you know, Wipeout and Sly Cooper, pretty interesting. We've got three potential um, PlayStation Classic IP, which, you know, they're not even, they weren't even that dormant, I guess. Uh, the last original Wipeout was in 2012 on PlayStation Vita. We had 2012 for the Twisted Metal. Um, and then Sly of Thieves in Time, that was 2013, I think, but it's still been a long time, of course, right? Sony has a lot of dormant IP that, um, you know, you kind of assume they're not going to be coming back anytime soon, at least not by their respective uh, developers. If Sony wants to contract that stuff out, they can do that, but, you know, you wouldn't expect Sly Cooper from Sucker Punch, which that actually was the rumor, or you wouldn't expect Naughty Dog to do Jack and Daxter, you know, so on and so forth. So, and with Twisted Metal, this would have to go out to somebody else entirely, right? Uh, like, for example, maybe Lucid Games, but the rumor there was that they were handling this, you know, Wipeout VR title. But the point is, we've got a handful of these uh, classic PlayStation games that are possibly getting, you know, new life on PlayStation 5, which is quite interesting. And honestly, out of all the rumors that we've been covering for PS5 up to this point, I mean, you all know me, I would actually be thrilled with this uh, if these games were all true and actually coming. So I hope that is the case. Um, you know, for something like Twisted Metal and Sly Cooper, Wipeout, and a lot of these games that have been sitting for a long time, it's just the case of like, I love all of them, but it's just, I know that, 
you know, some of these games didn't perform all that well throughout their, their lifetime, and that's why a lot of them go on the back burner. Um, but also, for some of them, uh, Wipeout didn't have nearly as much reach as it did back on the PS1. Um, Sly and Twisted Metal. Um, I don't know how fans really felt about the 2012 Twisted Metal, but it's just something where, as a multiplayer game or even single player, PlayStation 3 had a tough time just with its lower install base and not moving nearly as many copies um, as some of these games you know, would have otherwise if they were, say, on PlayStation 4, because PlayStation 4 is where we had a lot of these you know, big budget um, you know, marquee titles start to move 5, 10 million plus units, but that was not really the case for a lot of uh, PlayStation 3 exclusives. So despite the quality of those titles, um, that's part of the reason why some of them just did not see sequels beyond you know, say their last versions on PS3, but interesting rumors. I would love to see how this pans out. I mean, I'm actually, I, I like these rumors. I want these ones to happen, and I hope there's maybe, you know, a few more of them in there that uh, Sony's willing to do, because this also um, is at complete odds with, you know, this sort of notion that Sony, Sony doesn't care about these older franchises, or that they're only interested in putting out games that are going to easily do five or ten plus million, like, you know, obviously that was kind of like a ridiculous notion, but there is, you can still see their path of like the big budget stuff and really capitalizing on that. So I hope that they find a really good balance here. And if these rumors are to be believed, then they might be doing just that. Not to say that Sly, Wipeout, and Twisted Metal can't move a ton of units, but just how they have how they were seen previously and what they might be able to do now. I mean, I'm, it's encouraging though. I hope they do uh, come out and they do really well. Now, the other game-related rumor that we had last week was about uh, possibly a new From Software uh, deal of some kind, like how PlayStation did with Demon Souls and now Bloodborne, that we could be seeing another Souls-like exclusive game that Sony owns. And so the source of that rumor was Special Nick of the you know, Xbox Era podcast and XboxEra.com. And so on the recent episode of that podcast, he discussed it a little bit where he just talks about how it is a deal in the same veins of Demon's Souls and Bloodborne, so it would be a matter of From Software and also um, Sony XDev uh, collaborating to get this project out. Sony would own the IP, so you know this project would not be able to go anywhere essentially unless it was on Sony's terms. Uh, but maybe that would uh, include a PC release either, you know, one or two years later if it's you know part of the roadmap, whereas it, that was not part of the roadmap before in twenty. Uh, 14 when or 2015 when Bloodborne came out uh, but he does say that Miyazaki is involved and that it's um, it's going to be an original game so not a Bloodborne 2 or something and that it is going to be more Souls like whereas it's like it's not going to be what Elden Ring and Sekiro uh, are going for right so it's going to be something in the veins of that so there's not much new information there really uh, we can't say much else so we've got a ton of rumors that we just went over within the last two weeks and we're just gonna have to sit on it and see how they play out. Moving on to our next story, it looks like we might have finally found out what went down at Sony's Manchester studio. If you remember, they had this team built in 2015 as a purpose-built VR studio, and then they were closed in 2020 and we never saw anything out of them. Um, no game announcements, no formal reveal of the studio, nothing. All we had was job listings telling us that they were a thing and that they were working on a AAA VR title, but that was it. And I think when they were closed, I said something like, you know, we'll get the story eventually, just not now. And uh, what well, looks like today is now the time where we have that story. So this is coming from Jack Yarwood over at Polygon, where they spoke with five former employees that spoke anonymously. And so the game was called CSAR Combat Search and Rescue. It was supposed to be a VR helicopter action game. It was in development for five years until it was shut down. And for most of that time, it was in pre-production, so that already tells you that this was not a very smooth development cycle. Uh, that was mostly due to endless iteration and lack of pressure from Sony. The basic idea is that this was a helicopter action game for VR, so you'd be flying around and rescuing people while also avoiding and shooting at enemies from the helicopter. You'd also have this aircraft carrier where you'd stop and take a break, select new missions, things like that. Uh, some of the big hurdles were spending 6 to 12 months on a certain element of the game like NPCs and art style 
and then completely changing course, which we all know that's going to be a huge setback. Uh, there were also issues of micromanagement and not having things approved in a timely manner with very little support from the producer. Sony was hesitant to hire more staff until the game entered full production, but they basically just let it linger for you know, a while under 30 employees because it wasn't that costly at the time. And then come 2019 with the corporate restructure, they were no longer safe during the next portfolio review, basically. So when Herman Hulse became the head of PS Studios, I'm sure this is one of the you know many projects that he looked at and, you know, five years of not having much progress, still being in pre-production, it being a VR title, uh, not having that much staff to begin with, I could see where, you know, this game didn't really have much of a chance at turning into something full scale. And apparently this is a, a small element that came from Evolution Studios when they were working on uh, Drive Club. So I guess this was a small thing that they were you know, taking a look at and testing and thinking about. And then it was passed over to this, um, this small team where, again, it looks like micromanagement was a huge problem here. Um, and then if the producer's not really doing their job and, um, but it's weird to hear that there, were, there was no pressure from Sony uh, during this whole thing, and if you do read the full article, which I'll I'll try and remember to link down below, but um, apparently Sony wasn't really pushing the project as much as you know you would think, and so they were kind of left to just do their own thing at their own pace. But it just kept going on and on and on, and by the time Sony finally came knocking to say, hey, you know, what do we have? And there's nothing. I mean, that's why um, they were shut down. So that would also explain why we never had a formal studio reveal, kind of like Team Asobi, right? So that also kind of shows that when Sony does a purpose-built studio from the ground up, they don't want to really talk about it until the project is either ready to be shown or there's a proven track record of, the, of those games previously. And let's say this was a small team inside of another studio, like how Team Asobi, you know, became a thing, right? And so unless they have a proven record of products to show, I mean, I think this is, this is how they're going to be approaching these things. Uh, but for right now, at least, it looks like that is the story of Manchester Studio. Um, you kind of had a you had to figure that it wasn't really a an uplifting story uh, because they were closed. But yeah, well, that's the harsh realities of game development, unfortunately. Now, with all that said, it is time to get to Let's Talk Plus, the weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. And if you'd like to win a $10 PSN code, it's very easy. Follow the link down below. Support in this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry. And I'll announce the winner next week because I'm trying to help pay for your games. Those are all the news stories that I want to talk about with you all from this past week. Our Tuesday video was PlayStation Company Facts. So a deep dive into, you know, a bunch of secrets, um, weird little things that Sony's mentioned in the past from like, you know, Ken Kudaragi, Mark Cerny, even a little bit of Sean Blade and Shuhei Oshida. A lot of interesting, cool details in there. Go check it out. And then coming up, we've got Gamescom next week. Not sure if there's really going to be much of anything when it comes to PlayStation news. Uh, we're getting closer to September and we're looking at that. So we'll see what happens. But until then, that's it. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Panecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me. And I will see you all next Friday.